Welcome to Hart Square. Hart Square is located about 13 miles south of Hickory in a little community called Plateau. It's a 200 acre track located at the foot of Hog Hill. I'd like to tell you the story of how Hart Square began. Back some 40 years ago in August of 1967, I purchased a small tract of land, some 40 something acres originally, for $75 an acre, which then was, I thought, fairly expensive. Office visits at that time were $3 or $3.50. I delivered babies for $75. That included all the prenatal, the lab work, and the circumcision and the pediatric nursery. My vision at that time was a nice family retreat from a busy family practice. I built several ponds, bought in a deer herd of six, Canadian geese, put out wood duck boxes. Unknown was a to me was that it was someone entered the project that I had done into the State Governor's Award, which was the Conservation Award for the state by the governor, called the Governor's Wildlife Preservation Award, and, the, and Hart Square won that back in 1987. After I completed my upper lake, one of my younger patients, Paul Hedrick from Conover, said, Doc, I've got an old log cabin near, near here that's falling down and it would really look good on your upper pond. Well, manually, we, Paul and his brother and, and myself, along with one strapping young uh, gentleman, hand put that log cabin back together. When I started, I had no conception of what this thing would turn into from one log cabin. It was within a few months that Paul said, you know, there's an old barn near here that looked good uh, by that log cabin. And then it was an outhouse and a well and now I'm up to over 101 structures. With the first couple cabins, uh, I hired a young fellow that was a carpenter and a rock mason, Terry Thrift, an excellent uh, mason and uh, builder, and I worked side by side with him every chance I got, and after about the second or third, I was able to move them, take them down, and actually build the chimneys myself. Now, a few of the chimneys might be a little crooked, the first few, but I tell people, look, it's 150 years old. It's going to sag or settle a little in that length of time. Most of these buildings were donated to Hart Square, particularly since people saw that we were preserving them and their name would be, in, you know, f placed on the cabin. And the history of the f each cabin is documented and placed inside with a handout in each building. Uniquely, and ironically, the fact that I found these buildings locally, they're all basically from Catawba Valley. You know, at first people saw what we were doing and they saw that I was preserving these buildings and this helped continue for people to uh, donate cabins to Hart Square. I can take down a cabin with one person, a small one, in one to two days. That cabin may take five to six months to put back. You know, most of the people that lived in log cabins in the 1800s actually started work at daybreak and worked until dark, probably going to bed fairly early every night. And as you can see some, from some of these log cabins over 100 years ago, the, the style of life there was so different from the style of life today that I think sometimes the younger generation doesn't appreciate as much of their heritage as I think they should. Uh, and I'm trying to show them a way that can bring back life to them and sh so they'll better understand how their forefathers lived. Most days now that I'm retired you'll find me out here almost any day including Sunday. I go to church on Sunday the 8 o'clock service and I'm usually out here by 9 30. One of the questions people ask me what, what, what do I do all, all the time that I'm out here? Well with 101 structures and wind and rain and leaves and dust and spider webs cutting grass mowing runways uh, there's always uh, something to do. Every time I sit down just for a few minutes to, to relax, I can look across the field or by one of the cabins and I can see where something that needs to be repaired or the road has got a little more uh, leaves in it that it, ought, that it ought to, then I'll head for a backpack blower or a hammer and a nail to fix what's broken. And I still enjoy doing the work at, even at my age and most of the time I'm the only one when we're tearing a building down that will get on a roof of a cabin. In fact, if you look at this cabin here at the stockade, you'll see my son holding me by the belt as I'm leaning over the chainsaw cutting the roof off. You know, it's interesting in, in finding antiques to furnish this place, and certainly you can't afford to buy them at the 
most prices, so you have to find them behind on a pickup pickup truck or yard sale, and you'll find me almost every Thursday at the flea market here in Hickory. And my vacation time is spent traveling throughout the uh, eastern part and southern part, uh, east of the Mississippi, not much farther than, than uh, Pennsylvania, looking for antiques to put in this particular village. The first few times that I would buy antiques, uh, I would buy a piece that was painted blue with buttermilk paint and would intentionally strip it off to get that nice pretty heart pine until a friend of mine who's an excellent antique dealer said, Bob, you just cut the value in half by taking, it, taking that original paint off of it. So I've learned a lot through the years. Uh, in fact, I even gave lectures on authenticity of furniture one time with Brad Rauschenberg from, from uh, Old Salem. When I go to a flea market, uh, I always go, not as a doctor, I usually go in rough blue jeans and not a checkbook saying Dr. Robert W. Hart. Uh, and every flea market, you're going to bargain. And I've missed some good bargains because I want him to come down another 10 or $15 and I'd walk 10 feet away and turn around to get it. And sure enough, somebody would walk up and buy it. Many times I go in with a flashlight to, to see what I'm trying to buy, along with a lot of other people that have the same uh, desire as I do, find the first, first thing they're going to show. Is, and, the best things will be bought right quick. In fact, most flea markets I go to, I've run out of money in the first hour. <laughs> People say, I, I didn't find anything. Well, when you're shopping for a hundred and something different buildings and different st styles, of, you're gonna find something in the 1800s of one of those structures. You know, with that, one of the neatest things of having Heart Square is the fact that I've been able to involve my entire family, my grandchildren, my children, and uh, their friends, and particularly my wife, who's put up with me over 40 years, not being there for dinner, coming in at 10 o'clock at night dirty, having to do my laundry, <laughs> which she usually has to run through the washing machine two or three times to spray it real well. So, but a lot of, a lot of, a lot of work and, and a lot of things in, in the village that, that, that I really didn't do. It was through the help of many people, the volunteers through the years, that make Heart Square what it is today. I call the work out here a passion. My wife Becky calls it an obsession. After over 100 structures, now I'd like for you to join me in a tour throughout the entire village individually uh, so you'll understand and learn more about Heart Square.